Hey guys, what's up? This video is brought to you by Linode Cloud Computing. If you guys are looking to host your website out there so everybody can see it, I recommend you check them out. They're going to save you a ton of money over Azure AWS. They have products that pretty much suit anybody from small developers to large corporations. They have data centers around the world and they're continuing to grow all the time. And they also have a YouTube channel that you guys can check out if you're interested in hearing more about their products directly from them. Hey everybody, what's up? Alright, so in this video, what we're going to be talking about is whether or not PHP, the scripting language, is still relevant in 2020. There's a lot of mixed signals out there and a lot of YouTubers just spouting bullshit. I might be one of them too, but uh, the point is I'm going to try to go off of basic facts and not just a, a, a opinion. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the stats here and try to see what's going on. with. It. So real quick though, I just want to go ahead and give my perspective of PHP. And uh, I go back with PHP like 10 years ago when I first started playing around with it. And uh, I came from Perl and then moved to Python. And then like I spent some time like between Perl and Python where I was like messing around with PHP, trying to figure out if that was going to be my language uh, that I was going to choose. And my dad really was fond of it as a former C++ developer. But he was also a former Perl developer, and he went from C++ to Perl and then to uh, PHP and did a lot of web development that way. So uh, he loved it, but for me, I hated it because PHP very much reminded me of Perl. So really, PHP is a very old language. It's now decades old, and as you can see from the website, it looks old. Um, now, PHP was actually built in the image of Perl. Perl was one of the most popular languages throughout the 90s and early 2000s. It was called the Swiss Army Chainsaw, the web. And instead of using, uh, well, basically everybody was using CGI scripts, and then we moved over uh, to PHP. So basically, PHP was built to do what Perl was doing for the web, but do it better. So one of the problems with that is that when PHP came along, it used like a lot of these, like, uh, these sigils for variable names. So the dollar sign is for a simple variable. And then they have like the at symbol that it uses um, and then like the pound sign. And all those are different variable types. And it's really kind of annoying and unnecessary, but uh, it's just something that Perl does and it's something that PHP does. So uh, you could see that it's very similar to how these variables are constructed. And that's why uh, PHP is really based off of Perl. Now, PHP gets a lot of crap for being a very terrible looking language. And a lot of the reasons for that is because uh, a lot of stuff was just simply tacked on to the language. Um, but some of the original criticism with PHP goes back to the fact that it was like the original script kitty language where anybody with like the most basic level of HTML, CSS, and they move over to a server environment, they use PHP and they would stand up servers for customers and clients. Uh, and have like SQL injections just wide open for databases and such that are out there. Uh, so PHP would like really, really burn a lot of developers because they didn't know what they were doing when it came to security. And it wasn't really built with a security first mindset. Now, eventually over the years, um, these security flaws were discovered and, and patched up and PHP is not nearly as, um, uh, as insecure as it, as it used to be considered. Some of the other criticisms from the language, though, go back to the fact that it was actually created by this guy named Rasmus Lerdoff, who wasn't even really uh, a software engineer, at least, um, you know, he, he, he didn't consider himself to be like, uh, so basically the guy says it himself. I mean, he ended up creating PHP as a, a, a pet project in 1995. And then you can see this is an article from VentureBeat from back in 2013, where it says, you know, why the father of PHP doesn't like programming. Uh, so he goes through and talks in this interview about some of the mistakes that were made with PHP, like case insensitive stuff, especially for built in like functions and uh, just library imports. A lot of like not standard practice when you compare that to other languages like Python and C Sharp. So honestly, that in a nutshell is um, is PHP. Now, why is PHP so popular? It goes back to really a lot of different things. But in my opinion, not just the script kitties, but one of the best advantages of PHP back in the day when I was first getting started was that PHP ran everywhere. So like if you wanted to do a .NET stack, you were going to pay out the nose for like some sort of uh, hosting provider that had .NET set up for you. Um, even if you wanted to do Python and Django, there wasn't nearly the level of support that there was for PHP. So when it came to actually deploying your project out there, PHP made a ton of sense. It, it was easy and cheap to host any sort of website that ran it. Um, so another thing too is WordPress. WordPress is still probably the most popular open source blogging framework, and it's built on top of PHP. And then also we have old school e-commerce platforms that go way back as well, like um, 
uh, just things like Magento and all that stuff. A lot of that is uh, also built in PHP. So PHP kind of dominated a lot of these different markups, basically everything in the blogging sphere and then also into the e-commerce sphere. Uh, and then the fact that it was cheap to host, it just made a lot of sense. And and, and to this day, there's still more PHP sites than um, any other language. All right, so that's basically my version of PHP's history in a nutshell. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some stats here. So the first thing we're going to look at is GitHub. And um, the thing I want to show you first is that when you compare PHP to some of these other languages, um, unfortunately, it's not doing nearly as strong as some of these other languages. So if I go ahead and remove some of these on... Uh, the GitHub stats, you can see that PHP is on a steady decline all the way back from where it peaked, it looks like, around 2011, 2012. And it's just been continuing, continuing to decline. Now, that said, PHP is still very, very competitive because when you look at the overall amount of code on GitHub, uh, PHP is still ranked number four. So it's been on the decline for many years now, but it's still the fourth most, uh, there's still... Of all languages out there, uh, PHP is fourth most in the amount of code that is on GitHub. So even with those concerning declines on the GitHub trends, um, it, it is still there, you know there's just still tons of PHP code out there and opportunity. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is Stack Overflow. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. That's the number one question answer format for computer coding. All right, so when we take a look at those stats, we can see the same thing. So it looks like it peaked around, you know, the, uh, 2011 through 2014, somewhere in there, and then it's just been on a steady decline ever since. Now, a lot of people are going to ask, like, well, what about Laravel? What about Laravel? Like, if I put Laravel in here, you can see that it's a pretty popular web framework for PHP, but it's still not popular, obviously more popular than its uh, the language itself. But uh, you can see that... I mean, it's it, it's kind of it, it's growing. There's some interest. There's been a little bit of decline here in the last year or so. Um, good question. I have no idea. All right, now we're going to look at Indeed, which is the number one jobs website in the United States. Now, uh, the thing I will say that it doesn't reflect very accurately on European jobs, obviously. So, if you're in the eurozone or in Asia or something, then um, the, you know this could be a lot different. But for the United States, there's only 8,138 jobs that list PHP as a requirement. Um, so when you compare that to like C Sharp, there's about 60,000. JavaScript's probably got 80,000. So overall, um, PHP has been on a steady decline as well when it comes to jobs in the United States. Now, the one interesting caveat to that is that there is a recent Indeed article that I was reading, and it was saying that the number one listed job in 2020 um, and, and with growth since January is an entry-level PHP developer. And I'm trying to figure out why that would be, but it's saying that there was an 834% increase but overall, it doesn't look like the jobs are really reflective of it overall because those PHP numbers are not that much different from videos I've done about a year ago. So th there's no way that we're seeing this 834% explosion. I think what we're seeing is that there were a lot of people laid off because of the coronavirus. There's a lot of people working freelance and from home now. Uh, PHP is still one of the best gigs for these freelance developers that work from home. Another thing, too, for the junior level stuff, when everybody's losing their jobs and we're in the middle of a pandemic, it's also a good opportunity for cheaper companies to try to list jobs for, for cheaper values. You could have senior PHP developers taking those junior jobs uh, just because there's nothing else there. Anyway, that's just my speculation. I, I don't see it personally. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is Google Trends. And this is uh, not the best gauge here, but we're going to look passed on the, the, the past five years here, but you can see that it kind of matches up with the other data that we have, that it's been on a steady downcline. So if we go all the way back to 2004, that's just not boding very well for PHP as a search term. All right, and then finally, we're going to look at this TOB index, which I feel like is a very outdated way of looking at the most popular languages because it absolutely makes no sense. In fact, the website is worthless. As, I'm not even going to say it, but it's just worthless. Because how could you have C as number one with 17%? Like, yes, yeah, C is the language that all these other ones down here way outnumber the amount of opportunities in C. So th this just seems like a worthless rating to me, but it is one of the most popular, so I'm going to go ahead and mention it. And, uh, you know, PHP right here is number eight, and it's moved up one spot over the last year. And then another popular website is this uh, Pi PL. I don't know what this is, a popularity of programming. Anyway, that's a terrible name. But 
it's pretty popular and you can see Python's number one and then it has number uh, five for PHP. So PHP is still pretty popular. And if you have WordPress and now you have really, you still have 60 plus percent of all websites out there running PHP, there's gonna continue to be an opportunity, I think, going forward. But obviously based on the stats, PHP as a language has seen its prime like this thing is now fading into obscurity it's not going to happen overnight it's not even going to happen probably over the next decade but it's definitely happening all right so if you guys are learning to program and you want to learn with me check out my website codehawk.com i have this all access bundle it's one price it's not annual or anything like that it's just one price one charge and you get in uh, unlimited access to all the videos that i create now and in the future on this codehawk platform so make sure you check that out